Welcome back to Purple Collar Life. In today's video, we're talking about the seven things to look for if you're looking for a used classic tractor. In today's video, you can see we've got the Ford Workmaster and the Ford 8N here. I'm gonna be talking to you about some seven key things to look at if you're tractor shopping for an older tractor like one of these Fords. Yes, in this video we are talking about the Ford 8N and the Ford Workmaster 641. But these same seven tips can help you no matter what brand of older classic tractor you're looking at. And maybe even some of the newer used tractors. These are just seven things in general to consider when you're looking at a used tractor. And I figured it's the perfect time of year right now to talk about this because it's the start of March, the start of springtime, and some people might have new property or older property and they're tractor shopping. These old antique classic tractors are some of the best workhorses you'll find. You figure these tractors like the Ford 8N have been operating for more than 70 years. The Ford Workmaster about 60 years. So there's a lot of history in these machines. They're pretty simple machines to maintain and they just work and work and work. That's why a lot of people love these classic tractors. Now I should put a disclaimer in here. These are just the opinions of one man me, Chad, from Purple Collar Life. I have owned a couple of these old Ford tractors for a long time, but that doesn't mean I'm a total expert on these machines. These are just my thoughts and things I've learned over time. If I were shopping for another classic tractor today, the key things I would look for. And the number one thing I would look for is the owner's knowledge. How long have they had the machine and was it loved? And by was it loved, I mean, I'm not talking about is it all shiny, polished up and waxed. Um, those things can be nice too, but if they know a lot of the history of the machine, they've had it for a long time, it's been in their family, chances are they've taken better care of it than someone who just bought it at an auction, did a little bit of a paint job to it, maybe did a couple fixes, and they're trying to flip it. That, again, that's just my personal opinion, but I found that tractors that have been in the family a long time have more sentimental value to the owners and they take better care of those machines. The other thing that understanding the owner will help you do is know how this tractor was used. So this particular tractor has been in our family its entire life. It was originally used on a Shetland pony farm and my parents have been using it to take care of quarter horses and now to take care of the family land for a long time. So we have the full history on this tractor. We know how it was maintained, what it was used for, and it was used for baling hay at times, it was used for cleaning stalls at times. So we have really good knowledge of this tractor. And if we were selling this tractor today, which we never would, we could easily tell someone how this tractor was used over the, the lifetime of the machine. The number two thing that I think you should look at if you're looking at a used tractor is the transmission. First of all, you can pull the dipstick and take a look at that fluid. You wanna see what that fluid color is Make sure it doesn't smell weird. Um, so those are some things you could look for. But also just even a little bit more simple, taking a feel for how the clutch works. Does it shift in and out of gear? Does it move in forward and reverse without any weird noises? So let's go ahead and start the 8N up here. So let's go ahead and try reverse here and clutch push down. If you're not sure how to start and operate one of these machines, I've got a video to watch you through that process. I'll put a link to that up above, but it's about this port gate end, how to start and operate this tractor. So the clutch down, put it in reverse, let the clutch out a little bit. No weird noises. Try first. No weird noises. Great first. Go back into reverse. 
here. Everything operates as it should. The clutch is doing great. Everything the clutch controls on these eight ends is good to go. So if I push the lever down here, I'm in the left hand side of the seat. If I the clutch out, that's start my PTO. And we'll talk about in just a minute how that also runs the hydraulic raise the lower. The reason I put transmission as number two on my list is because these older tractors a lot of times have to be split in half to work on the clutch or parts of the transmission. And while that was a task that the farmers used to do many years ago, it's a task that many of us today aren't really knowledgeable on how to do. The number three thing on my list of things to look at if you're looking at a classic tractor is the hydraulics. Now the hydraulics between this Ford 8N and the Ford Workmaster are two entirely different systems. But let's talk about the 8N first. On this Ford 8N, the hydraulics are linked into the transmission. So like I showed you before, you have to have the engine running, you have to be clutch engaged and then disengaged with the PTO running for the hydraulics to run. The PTO spinning always has to happen for the three-point lift to lift. And on this machine, that is the only hydraulics, the three-point lift. But that's one of the things you want to look for. If you start up an old machine like this and you push up on the lift control lever beside the right-hand side of the seat and the three-point lift does not raise, that's a red flag that there's a problem with the hydraulics. Now again, you want to make sure you know how to do that and you should watch the video with the link up above on how to start and run your 8N tractor. Because in that video I explain how to turn that switch on that runs the PTO that will then drive the hydraulics to lift the three-point hitch. On the Ford Workmaster, it has its own hydraulic pump separate from the transmission. That means this has live hydraulics. You do not have to have the PTO engaged to lift the three-point hitch. So at any time, I can lift up on my three-point hitch lift lever and that three-point hitch will lift up. Let me show you how that works. The next thing I want to talk about if you're looking at a used classic tractor is the tires. It used to be the tires were not a huge deal. You could replace them if you needed to. Well, tire prices have gone absolutely crazy. So if you've got a pair of tires where the sidewalls all rotted out and they're, they're going to be constantly giving you a problem, then it's probably best to consider that when you're thinking about the price of that machine. You might spend more than $1,000 on four new tires for an old tractor like this. You can see that the old Ford tractor does have four nice new tires on it. That's because dad has taken the time and spent the money to upgrade the tires on this machine. The other thing you need to think about when you're looking at these old tractors, a lot of them had calcium in the tires and the calcium had the benefit of giving you a lot more weight, a lot more traction when you're moving material or when you're running the tractor across the field. The downside to that calcium is it would eat away at these steel rims. A lot of times it happens first around the valve stem. So in the case of this Ford 8N tractor, my dad has actually had to replace these rims and you can tell their replacements by how the bolts go through them. I've talked about that in a previous video. I'll put a link to that up above. But if you've got bolts that go through like this without a solid rim on the outside, that means that the rim has been replaced. And there's nothing wrong with that. It just means it's not original equipment and it probably had to be replaced because of the calcium eating through that rim. Number four on my things to think about or look at if you're looking at a used tractor is the engine. And there's a lot of things you can tell about the engine, just about how it sounds and the smoke that comes out of the exhaust. You wanna watch for white smoke, blue smoke, um, or any excessive smoke that smells like oil or burning too rich or anything like that. Those can all be symptoms of a problem with the engine. The other thing you might wanna do is go ahead and pull out the spark plugs, see how they look, if they're all carboned up or if they look fairly like they're burnt clean. Obviously, another thing you wanna do is look at the oil. What's the engine oil level? Is it within the specified range? Does it look like it's just been recently changed, which can be a red flag that maybe the oil wasn't great and they switched it out right before you looked at it? Or does it look like it's been somewhat used like this, but not overused? And just like the hydraulics are different between the Ford Workmaster tractor and the 8N, the engines are also different, but you can look at those same things. You wanna look at the spark plugs, check the oil, see how it sounds when it's running, make sure there's nothing unusual when you increase and decrease the throttle, and then check out the smoke coming out of the tailpipe. On the Ford 8N tractor, that dipstick to check the oil is right here. 
and it does have a full level safe operating range and a danger range. Since oil pressure is one of the keys to keeping an engine healthy, a lot of these old tractors did have an oil pressure gauge. You want to make sure that's operating within a safe range and that's going to vary depending on the tractor. I like to see it always over 20 when I'm running. Uh, the Ford 8N is always over 20. The Ford Workmaster is a little bit higher. It's typically over 30 for oil pressure of the engine when it's running at a normal throttle. <laughs> Number six on my list is the history of the machine. This kind of goes back to number one and that uh, owner's knowledge of the machine. But even if the owner doesn't know that much about it and you look at the instruction manual and someone has kept a ledger on the front of all the oil changes, dates, how many hours were on the machine if it has an hour meter. Those are all key indicators that someone has taken good care of this machine. Another really good indicator is if someone's got extra parts. So if they've got a supply of oil filters, that means they thought ahead and they were going to take care of this machine. If they've got extra belts, that's another good sign that they've used this machine for work. They know that sometimes things break down and they have spares on hand for when that happens. Those are all signs that someone has cared about the machine and wants to keep it running. And number seven on my list of things to look for if you're looking at an old classic tractor is what else comes with it. What are the attachments that can be included? So when I got this Ford Workmaster, it came with a double bottom plow and the brush hog. Those were two things that were included in the tractor that I just appreciated having um, as additional tools, especially the brush hog because that's something I can use at least several times a year to clear paths and to clear pasture areas. The Ford 8N tractor has the carry-all on it right now, which dad uses to haul a lot of firewood. But this tractor, since it was in the family for so long, has a lot of really cool attachments. It's got a cement mixer. It's got a post hole auger. It's got a boom lift. Of course, it's got a back blade. It's got a brush hog. So the more of those implements you can get included in the price of your used tractor, that's less you have to buy somewhere else. And if you've seen the things like the price of a brush hog lately, It'd be really great to get one that's always been used with the tractor, that the owner knows is working, but you don't have to spend a lot of money on it. Okay, let's review those seven key things to look for if you're looking for a classic tractor, and then I'll throw one bonus in at the end. Number one, and I've got my list right here, the owner's knowledge. How was it loved? How was it used? When was it used? How often was it used? How was it stored? It's another key part of that. If it's always been stored indoors, obviously that's better than always being stored outdoors. Number two, the transmission. You want to make sure you try every single gear. No strange noises. The clutch works properly and everything feels like it's good with the transmission. Number three is the hydraulics. The key thing on there is does the three-point hitch lift and then stay up? Now with these old tractors, the three-point will drop over time when the engine is not running. That's totally normal. But when you put it up and the, tr the engine is running, the three-point hitch should not drop. You're still generating that hydraulic pressure the three-point hitch should stay in its upright position. Number four, the tires. Those are super expensive now if you have to replace them, so obviously better if you can find one that has good tires, but if it doesn't have good tires, consider that as you're adding up the numbers for the total price of that machine. Number five, the engine. Does it start easily? Does it sound good? Is there smoke? Does it have the proper oil pressure? Does the temperature stay within range if it has a temperature gauge? The 8N machine that I'm on right now does not have a temperature gauge, but the Ford Workmaster does. So you want to make sure that if you've got those gauges and they work, you can use that to help you determine the health of the engine. Number six, the history. Any maintenance records you can find. A lot of times old farmers would write those right on the uh, instruction manual for the machine. So if you've got the original instruction manual, that's a great place to look. Sometimes they kept receipts of the oil they bought, the belts they bought. Any of that information you have is just further proof that the previous owner cared about the machine and took good care of it. Also extra parts in stock, those oil filters, oil belts, anything like that are good indicators. And then last thing, number seven, the additional attachments. Does it come with a brush hog? Do they have a back blade? Are there augers? Are there chains for the tires to plow snow in the wintertime? Any of that stuff adds up over time when you're buying it in addition to the machine. 
if they can include it in the purchase price all the better okay my bonus tip here and this one is really important don't get distracted by a fresh coat of paint in fact in my mind a fresh coat of paint is often a red flag that they're trying to cover something up or make it look better than it actually is now this tractor does look sharp it's got a nice coat of paint on it it cleans up really nice but it is as mechanically sound as it is nice looking and this paint job was not recent this paint job is about 20 years old now so don't be discouraged if you find a tractor that seems mechanically sound but it doesn't have the best paint job it's got maybe a couple dings in it this machine has been really well taken care of and it has been loved throughout its life the previous owner of this machine had it for a long time it was always barn kept and it was a nice running machine for them so if you're looking for a quality show piece and that's it maybe that important paint job counts to you but to me i'd rather have a machine that is solid mechanically and maybe doesn't look quite as good because i'm using it not just taking it to tractor shows now if you can find one that has it all mechanically sound beautiful paint job could go could go to tractor shows and still work your land that one's probably going to cost you a pretty penny this video probably turned out a little bit longer than normal but i think there's a lot of good information in here for someone who's tractor shopping if i left something out those of you who have done tractor shopping like this before leave it down in the comments so that it can help people in the future when they watch this video and read through the comments what are some other things that you recommend looking for if you're tractor shopping for a classic tractor like one of these old fords i don't know everything about these machines so it's always helpful if those of you who know more than me can leave those comments down below but hopefully this video was both informative and entertaining i always enjoy making videos about these old ford tractors i love the history of the machines i like the family connection to this ford 8n so it's a, a fun thing for me to talk about in these old ford tractors and the work that they can do thanks for watching if you found this video informative and entertaining please give us a big thumbs up down below don't forget to leave those comments down below on other tips that you think someone should look at when looking at a classic tractor or just the history that you remember of old tractors like these ones. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you again the next time.